guess I have one question about something you said early on when you were talking about the creation of the ESM. You said that it you know, had been sort of missing element for crisis management. You said the stability and growth factor that any was you could never really get to the point of a crisis and the rules would prevent it. But I just wanted to challenge that a bit and ask what you think because, uh, I mean, I think Ma Maastricht did foresee a possibility where stability and growth factor would work, and the answer was the no bailout clause, right? So the answer was if you know, the rules don't work, you go bust. So wasn't the ES, when you say the ESM was a missing uh, element for crisis management, wasn't the ESM really a betrayal of the Maastricht approach? You know, and maybe there were good reasons to do it, and they thought they couldn't stick with the commitment, but that, that's my question to you. Yes, you are right that the intellectual thinking behind the Maastricht Treaty is closed. It's, it's a closed system. You have the Stability and Growth Pact. If this doesn't work, then you are lost. Is this credible? Obviously not. Yeah. What you then do, my recommendation always then is come closer to reality. Yeah. So then, in my view, you assume, you acknowledge that this situation can happen, and then you develop the right to instruments. But there is an, an open debate about this. Yeah, there are serious people in a number of countries saying the way that we have just moved in is the wrong way, and they want to go to a situation which one could call Maastricht 0.2 that one wants to reinforce the rules that were there, that one implements them. <coughs> um, these are very serious people. I would pursue a different avenue. And I think one has to be honest to the citizens of, of Europe, especially to the citizens in Germany, Finland, the Netherlands, Slovakia, Estonia, Luxembourg. What I will say, it's not only Germany. Yeah, it's easy to focus on Germany, but this position is, is shared by a number of countries. But one should be honest and say, listen, if you enter a currency area, this automatically entails a part of joint liability. Yeah. I think this was, is a mistake that was done when we introduced the common currency. I again use the example of Germany, but uh, you can do this for Austria, the Netherlands, or whatever as well. We said, oh, listen, you will get new coins and bills. The bills look a bit more fancy than the, the ones you have been before. They were more colorful than the bills we were used in, in our history. But besides the new bills and coins, nothing will change. And this is obviously not true. And this is why citizens, let's say in Germany now, feel a bit betrayed. But I think one has to be honest, say, listen, a currency area, by definition, means that you have automatic some joint risk sharing. And this is now what we tr have tried to follow up later and set these new institutions.
Again, I think we have to be honest. I mean, the, the term transfer union is highly negative, connotated again in Germany. But we already have a transfer union via structural funds and regional funds. These are pure transfer, transfers from the EU budget. But structural funds and regional funds are seen highly positive. Yeah, one can change a lot here, yeah, the way how they are financed and whatsoever. But there is a transfer element already there. To try to be very quick, my picture is that we already have a Europe at different speeds. So I do not fear this situation. It's simply the understanding of different political and economic realities. I mean, some countries have the euro, others not. Some are part of Schengen, others are not. Some are part of the fiscal compact, others are not. Some are part of the banking union, others are not. So we have different speeds already. And this will stay, in my view, for, for the foreseeable future. And for me, the core of European integration is the euro area. And this needs to integrate more. Have a complete banking union, move towards first steps of a fiscal union accompanied and parallel by a political union. This is my picture. One can, al one, one can already challenge this. Yeah? Because the fiscal compact for the first time opened the possibility that not all euro area countries would subscribe to it. This has passed, all euro area countries are part of this, but for the first time there was a legal possibility in a contract that not all euro area members would join that. So this is the, the inner core of the integration and then we have to find a clear relationship between the inner core and the others. This is already also part of the Brexit debate. The, Brexit ha the UK has said we are permanently not part of the euro area. Whatever else happens, we will not join. That's like Denmark. Yeah? You have two countries with an opt-out, and my friends in Sweden have a half illegal opt-out. Yeah, that, that's it a bit. But we have to find a relationship between the, the inner core and the rest, where I would argue very much that the rest should not be in a position to stop the further integration of the inner core. Yeah. The inner core is, is, is not a closed shop. It's an open club. Countries can join like the three Baltic countries have done recently. But one cannot say, oh, I don't want to be part of this, but I don't want them to, to integrate more. Yeah, this currently is a bit the situation. We have the instrument of what is called enhanced cooperation. But here you need the yes of the 28 to allow a subgroup of the 28 to move ahead. So de facto, some of the outs can, can stop the inner circle <coughs> to move ahead. I think in my view, this has to be changed. Is there time for one last question, quickly? Yeah, um, I'd like to ask about the role of Germany in the adjustment programs, but not as we know the focus of the lender, but basically whether it's done its part in terms of its own fiscal This is a dangerous question. <laughs> um, it's known that, that I'm of the opinion that, that all countries in Europe need to do more structural reforms. 
This includes France and Germany, yes. I mean, the German economic situation is a relatively benign one because we are currently harvesting the fruits of reforms we have done 10 to 15 years ago. Yeah. So we are very fit for the present. The question is, are we fit for the future? And here, in my view, we need to do much, much more. So if we finger point about the pension system in Greece, we also could finger point about how we integrate migrants into the German labor market. Yeah, and we, we could go on like this. On the fiscal side, I think that Germany need to do more, but not in the sense that most people would, would assume, in my view, a bit superficially to do this. I, I think Germany needs more investment, public and private, because it would help our own economy. It will not so much help the countries, excuse me for the term, in the periphery. We have run the models, and the countries that would benefit more from, let's say, a looser fiscal policy in Germany, mainly via investment, investments, are the Netherlands, Poland, and Slovakia, because these are the countries that are highly integrated into global production change where Take the German car industry, for example. Yeah? So it will not benefit Greece, Italy, Portugal, close to zero. So that's a bit. But I think it would be a signal that we also do things. Yeah? I would not loosen fiscal policy too much. Yeah? One should not make a holy idea of the black zero. But it's right that in normal terms, in an rapidly aging society, a balanced budget is a good thing. Yeah, but also at the same time, we are underinvested. But one could do this, for example, to have more investments without losing fiscal policy. What, what one could do, but this is politically very complicated in all countries I know, you could redirect the structure of the public budget that you have. I mean, the last coalition treaty in Germany roughly added marginally 70 billion euros on public consumption, but only 10 billion in public investment. Yeah, so, so the budget is very much focused on consumption. And this is, again, difficult to change in a rapidly aging society. There is a natural tendency to prefer current consumption compared to future consumption. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Fascinating. All right. We've stewed the pot. Are you going to be here for lunch? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to convene and take the elevators down and walk across campus to the university center. This is the university club, rather, the university club. This is not where we ate lunch yesterday. It is a new location. Yes, this room will be locked. Can I just turn this down? Okay. I